The, the Big, Big Rescue. Rescue. In the land of Egypt, Moses he was walking on a hill, and he saw a bush on fire. The fire was the angel of the Lord. The angel spoke to Moses, I'm asking you to set my people free. Even though he was so nervous, Moses he accepted faithfully. Welcome back to Kids Church. Hasn't it been so much fun following the story of Moses? From his crazy survival experience as a baby to his awesome experience with God in the burning bush. Yeah, God has awesome plans for us and his plans for us are always to keep us safe. We can trust him that he hears us. Jesus too was kept safe as a baby and he got his awesome calling when he was baptised in the Jordan River. And now we learn about all the amazing signs and wonders that happened throughout Moses' life. Jesus did so many amazing miracles. And as we learn about Moses, it reminds us that God saves us. That's right. Our theme for you today is I don't need to fear, I'm brave as can be, because my God, He fights for me. We can be brave because God protects us. Jesus has the power to light up the world. Jesus has the power to light up my heart. Jesus has the power to light up the world. Jesus has the power to light up my heart. Jesus has the power to light up the world. Jesus has the power to light up my heart.
kids? As we have learnt of Pharaoh and Moses and of the ten plagues, I thought that we could do some pranking on my sister. Cause, as you probably know, boys love frogs. All kind of those gross things. But girls despise frogs. So I was thinking that we could use frogs, cause they were one of the plagues, for oh, pranking on my sister. So, here are the ultimate frogs. Here they are. See, nice and clear. They're all three the same, so yeah. So, the first froggy. So, I was thinking, because every time she loves putting on her slippers, I thought that we could do it in the slipper. Dun, 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 dun. In your pop. She can all the way down to the toes. <laughs> she is going to scream when she sees us. I better have the earplugs. Here we are, kids. The moment we've all been waiting for. Here she comes. Mom, Dad, I'm gonna study for chemistry. Hey, Dylan. Um, um, do you think you please play up front just because I got study for chemistry? Oh, that's all good, buddy. Okay, weirdo. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm gonna calculate this. Go check your cup! This is not my shoe. <laughs> what is that? Is that a, is that a frog? <laughs> Do it. Oh, you should have you seen just, your face. Oh. You just, you just put it. You put it on your shoe. <laughs> when God makes a plan, He chooses just the right person for the job. God makes Moses like a superhero. Although Moses thought of a million reasons why God had the wrong guy, God answered him every time, saying that God himself would be with him. Moses was brave and obedient, and even though he was scared, he told Pharaoh to let God's people go. They were slaves in Egypt and treat, were treated very badly. God heard their cries and He had a plan to rescue them. God always has a plan. The Lord warned Moses that Pharaoh's heart would be hard and he wouldn't let the slaves go free without a fight. God told Moses He would fight for Israel and do mighty miracles through Moses. Just like God had warned Moses, Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he said no. Pharaoh wouldn't listen, even though Moses warned him and gave him the chance to change his mind. God sent plagues to Egypt, plagues of locusts destroying their crops, plagues of frogs invading their homes, plagues of sickness and darkness. The children of Israel were kept safe in Goshen, but Egypt experienced terrible suffering. Still, Pharaoh would not let God's people go. Ask the Pharaoh, would you be so kind to let us go? But the Pharaoh, he was angry. He laughed at Moses, then he told him no. So Moses raised a staff. From heaven came the plagues down onto earth. There was blood all in the river, hailstones and locusts and the frogs. I'm so glad you could join us. Yeah, we're gonna see so many cool insects and animals from the plagues in Egypt. And even some really cool Egyptian things. Let's, Let's go! go.
Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh said, no, no. So God sent the plague to make Pharaoh change his mind. Hey Noah, what Noah? What was the first plague? Moses turned the water into blood. Mm, that's disgusting. No, it's gross. Second plague was frogs. Frogs in the bed, frogs in the kitchen, frogs everywhere, frogs in the food. All the dust in Egypt turned into lice. It covered all of the people in Egypt and their animals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the fourth plague in Egypt was flies. They were everywhere. Fly here. In the Bible there are lots of plagues. Let me see if I can catch this fly. The sixth plague was when all their livestock got sick. All the Egyptians, donkeys, cows and goats died. <laughs> Do you know what the next plague was, Felicia? Yeah, it was lots of sores and boils all over the animals and humans in Egypt. That would have been so painful. No, it was. What was the seventh plague? A massive, gigantic thunderstorm. There was thunder and lightning, and huge hail fell down from the heaven. The seventh plague was locusts. They ate all the Egyptians' food and crops. That's bad. No. There's the museum over there. of each family died. But guess what? The Israelite sons were saved. Finally, after many weeks of suffering, God sent the final plague and Pharaoh finally allowed Moses to take the slaves out of Egypt. Great, now it's your turn. Do you have your piece of paper and pen ready? I'm gonna time you for two minutes to draw your favorite superhero. Are you ready? And go! Hmm, what could you draw? Maybe Hulk, Batman, Spider-Man? You're doing great, kids. Got one minute left. Thirty. 
30 seconds left. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Well done, kids. What's your favourite superhero? I love Wonder Woman. If you loved your picture so much, make sure to send it in at kids at cityimpactchurch.com. Now we're going to hand it over to Charlie and Lucy, and they're going to be telling an epic story about how when God rescued them. Hi everybody, my name's Lucy. And my name's Charlie. And we're here to tell you about our trip to Mexico where we got caught in a massive hurricane. So what I remember about that night is um, that that day before we'd had to go to the shops and buy all these fruit and veggies and bread and all this and put it in, in our apartment that we were staying on, which was the top apartment on all the apartments on top of a cliff. So we were on the top apartment on the top of the cliff and there was a big storm that was about to come, right? And so that night, I remember waking up in the middle of the night and I could just hear all the wind around me and all the rain coming on the roof and it was like really, really loud. And I went out and by the front door, we had towels and we had to put a towel by the front door to stop the water coming in and then take the towel we had been using and wring it out in the bathroom to get all the, the, the water out and then switch it with the towel we put by the door so that none of the water could get through into our house. And also, it was a bit scary because it was so fierce that our parents thought that if that the roof of our um, apartment might fly right off the top of the building. So they had this plan and they were going to grab us and then we were all quite small at the moment at, at the time and they were going to grab us and they were going to put us in the cupboards to keep us safe which is a bit of a scary thought isn't it? Um, and so yes we all, it was a bit of a scary night for us. And the way that God helped us to escape from this really, situ uh, really scary situation was that we um, went, so we were in La Paz and we had drove, driven to Cabo San Lucas in the day and when we got to the airports um, it was, it, all the planes had flown uh, like flying over and they were upside down and all the chairs on from inside the airport were all over the car park and all this and the roof had collapsed everywhere and so when we got there there was 30,000 other tourists trying to get out of La Paz and Cabo San Lucas and we got sent back home. So the next day we came back out again and we tried to return our rental car to Fox Car Rentals. And when we got there, they actually told us that Fox Car Rentals had collapsed in the storm. And as they were telling us this, my dad comes running from where the one army plane is, or the one or two army planes are, where they were flying people out. And he said that he'd found the one army man he could find who spoke English, who'd said if he could get us all back to the airport where the planes were in five minutes he would give us um he would get us to the front of the line to go on this army plane so <clears throat> god had placed that man there in our path so that we would we would cross paths with him and he would make an opportunity for us to be able to get out and the the, the car rental man from the other place that wasn't fox said look i will help you get out of here if you come get all your kids in the car and drive over now i can drive this car back to where it needs to be and he helped us with that and we were really my parents were really worried that we were going to go to a place called mexico city which wouldn't have been very safe for us um but we actually ended up going to a really safe place called mazatlan instead where they then um we got by Atlantic Airlines, they actually were giving people like really cheap flights to go to San Francisco, San Diego, sorry. So um, God actually made a way for us to come from this really scary situation into like the best possible situation in the whole entire world that there could have been. I think what we learned through this whole situation was that even if something seems impossible or if it seems like maybe you could get possibly hurt um, or something really bad could happen, that you just need to trust God because He can make the impossible possible. And in the situation where we were in a very unsafe environment, there was people, um, people's houses had collapsed, there was lots of army men around and they had these big guns and it was not safe and people were stealing from stores. God made it possible for us to get out of there as soon as possible. And we learned that when you trust God and when you put Him first in your life, He will find ways to put you first and help you through everything, even if it seems like the most dangerous situation in the world. Thank you guys. Bye. 
The night before the great escape, God prepared his people. He told them to celebrate the Passover. Each family would need to sacrifice a lamb and when they put the blood on their doors, the plague of death would pass over their home and they would be safe. Have you ever been in a scary situation? Um, yes, I've got lost in the morning and um, God came up to me and was like, Janiah, Janiah, you need to do that and this to find your parents again. Yeah. So how did that happen? Tell me about that. That sounds crazy. It was actually scary because we were in this big shopping centre and um, my parents were in another aisle so I, God told me to um, go to the centre and you know how they have that mic thing? Yeah, they, they, he told me to go to the centre and, and tell um, my parents to go to the centre too. So and then they met me there. And what happened? Uh, I was just walking around on the aisle trying to find my parents and then God's like, Janaya, Janaya, you need to go to the centre and tell them to call your parents. You told me that you hadn't seen a miracle before, but God talking to you, do you think that's a miracle? Oh yeah, that is a miracle. Tell me about that. <laughs> um, but like, so when, you, uh, when I was walking to the centre, I was like, this isn't real, this isn't real. How is this happening? This isn't real. And then when I go to the centre, I call them and they called my parents and my parents are there. I'm like, whoa, that's a miracle. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so he rescued you from being lost, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Is that kind of similar to what Jesus has done for us? We are lost, right? Yeah. Tell me about that. Like when we get lost or something and we're scared, like or when we lose hope or faith in somebody, then we just pray to God and He will find a way and He does a miracle for you. And like if you're sick, He will do anything for you. Like if you fall down on the ground and you break something, He always finds a way to heal you. Dear Lord Jesus, look after all the children around the world and protect them that nothing come near them or nobody touch them. In the name of Jesus, protect their life and that nothing come near them, no, nothing bad happen to them. In the name of Jesus we pray, Amen. The children of God were protected from the bad things that were happening in Egypt at this time. This experiment illustrates the power of God when you speak in the name of Jesus. Hi Kids Church! Hi! Welcome to Harriet, Millie and Ollie's house. We hear that you've been talking about faith and praying in Jesus' name. Does God hear your prayers when you pray? Yes. And do your prayers make a difference? Yes. Yes, they do a big difference. Remember what you learned last week. Faith has a voice. So we've got a little experiment to show you what that's like in our lives. So here we've got a plate, some water, some pepper, pepper and, some some soap. Soap. and some soap. And we're going to show you what it's like when you pray in Jesus' name. Okay, Harriet, can you put some water on the plate for me? Yeah. Sip it all out. Right, good girl. What does the plate and the water represent, Millie? Your life. That's right, your life. And we've also got some pepper. So, Millie, do you want to pour some pepper and have a sniff it? <laughs> when we get pepper up our nose, they can make us sneeze, eh, Millie? Sneeze. So, pour the pepper on, Millie. Pour it. All of it, yeah. That's it. Is there any more than that? No. Oh. There we are. So, what does the pepper stand for, Harriet? The pepper on the plate. Bad things like. When you're worried, you're scared, you're afraid, you're sick, and maybe even when you're um, in trouble. That's right. Sometimes bad or hard things can happen in our lives and we can be scared or afraid. So we're going to show you what happens when we pray in Jesus' name. Ollie, what do we do when we're sick? We stay in bed. <laughs> we stay in bed. That's right. What else do you do? <coughs> We um pray to God. That's right, we pray to God. So Ollie, give me your finger and I'm gonna put a little bit of soap on it. Can I have your finger? That's it. 
Okay, when you put your finger in the middle with the soap. <gasps> wow, can you guys see that? When Ollie touches the plate with soap on his finger, all the pepper flees. So that's why when we've got bad things happening in our lives, we pray in Jesus' name and all the bad things have to flee. So I think that's all from us today. We'll see you another time. Bye. Bye. Wow, kids, I'm so happy that God has rescued me and he's also rescued you too. If you want Jesus to come into your heart today, say this prayer. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you died on the cross for me. I'm sorry for everything that I've done wrong and that I'd ask that you would forgive me and come into my heart today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Wow kids, that was such an amazing prayer. I'm so happy and so proud of everyone that said that for the first time. That's such an amazing decision. Here's three points that will help you with your journey with God. Number one is pray. This is just like talking to Him, like I'm talking to you now. Number two is read your Bible. And number three is find a good chat so you can learn more about how to live God's way. Well, remember our theme for today is I don't need a fear, I'm brave as can be, because my God, He fights for me. Well, that's all for me today. See you kids, bye. Let's go to Egypt. <laughs> this is an actual mummy. I can pretend to be a mummy. Yeah.